Well, good afternoon and welcome to Tretton Park for this afternoon's penultimate home match of the season as City take on Tombridge Angels in National League South. It's that time of the season when fans look back at what-ifs. Penalties missed, shots had hit the bar and other moments of misfortune. Yet few can be greater than City's away performance at Tombridge. At half-time, the Romans were leading 2-1, but as the whistle blew, keeper Ollie Wright is left on the pitch with a dislocated shoulder. Up steps Joe Reigns, well, who else? To going goal, and despite his valiant efforts and those of the team to defend, they conceded two goals in the penalty spot. Angels managed to score from those two penalties, leaving City without a point and without a goalkeeper. Today, of course, is different. Two to three goalkeepers further on, and Joe Reigns will no doubt be hoping he isn't needed between the sticks. With the playoffs now back in City's hands, they're taking on a team whose last away victory was back at the end of January against a woeful Dover side. With tougher matches to come in the form of Hampton and Richmond and Aveley, all three points could make a significant difference come the season end. My name's Andrew Kerslake and our match commentator this afternoon, I will be joined by Mark Stillman. Referee just pausing for a moment there, just pointing to his assistant and we're underway. Thank you very much Andrew, as uh, Tumbridge get the game underway, it's over to Fielding, the right side of the back three for the visitors, comes up towards halfway. There's an early interception from Hayfield on MacArthur. Bates now taking it past halfway, knocking it on to Wilson. Wide left in front of the popular side. And then cleverly plays inside the Hayfield. He's got Reigns in room on the right hand side, Hayfield. He's surrounded by mint green shirts. Finds Greenslade. Trying to take it inside of Hines, but he's beaten by the Tumbridge number 12. He's playing further wide than we anticipated. He played in the middle on Monday as Bates wins the ball back to. Button. City unusually attacking the Bristol end first, going up the slope, left to right from our vantage points. Hayfield's gone on the right hand side, dinks one in towards Wilson, it's too high for him and it's covered from Fielding, a, not the best communication in the back, City with a corner inside 50 seconds. It's going to be right footed, out swinger, dinks it near the near post, should be goalkeepers all day long, that's an easy gather like when he would have taken the warm up. As Cook gets a flick on towards Wilson on the right, surrounded, plays it back to Reigns, holds off Shields, Batten, the useful ball forward actually, Sutcliffe doesn't know that Cook is lurking in behind him and he's brought down from Vincent, right on the side of the penalty area, very close to being in the box though, and it's a Bar City free kick. Yeah, I'd love to see that on a replay as exactly where that was. See Bates get some whip on it into a good area and it's Batten trying to turn, he can't get the shot in, Dyer's there as well, and it's a penalty. Dyer was tripped in the middle of all that in trying to bring the ball under control and have a go himself. His training leg was caught, and eight yards from goal. The referee is waving away all protests, and Bow City have a golden opportunity to take the lead. Well, the referee had no hesitation there. As soon as Dyer went down, he pointed straight to the penalty spot. Tombridge can argue about it, but it ain't going to make any difference. He's gone through this routine so many times before. 23rd penalty he's taken for Bath City. Cook, the usual little hesitation. Now he strides forward. Cook shoots, scores! Rolls into the bottom right corner. The goalkeeper goes the wrong way. And Cody Cook has 20 in all competitions for the second time in three seasons for Bath City. Quite a record. And yet again, he is so good and cool from the spot. Ten minutes, Bath City won, Tom Regan was nil. Yeah, enormous confidence there from Cody Cook. He knew exactly where he wanted to put that. Fired it down into the bottom right with considerable power behind it. And uh, you get the feeling that he's really grasped exactly how he wants to uh, take penalties down. And uh, does it very much at his pace and time scale. Headed inside now to Shields. Guard and then he gone to that. Ball. Now Shields has got it, 25 yards out on the right-hand side, knocks it further wide to MacArthur, sends the ball in towards Guard, he couldn't get it underneath it, Meads kept it in on the byline, Tumbridge has got players in the box, but his delivery doesn't beat first man, it hits range, it goes behind for a corner, that was a decent opening for the visitors. Over to Mead on the left-hand side, he's got an overlapping run of Vincent, 
centre back. Mead cut inside of range though with ease. Still Mead near the edge of the penalty area. Central. Still Mead going onto his right foot and it forced a save out of use. It nearly crept into the bottom right corner. Janaid Mead did so well to engineer that for himself. He's won a corner for his team. Yeah, because they've been right in front of his goal as well as Shields lofts his corner in. It's headed from Vincent who arrived well but could only put it wide a goal. It's still kept in play though with Sutcliffe. He's got guard to his left hand side, guards cross takes a hefty deflection and goes out of play via Hayfield for another Tunbridge corner, I think it's their fourth already. Reigns his long throw, he's looking for the head of Dyer, he does get a flick on behind him, Wilson wraps his foot around it but it's charged down. Yeah, I think in that situation Wilson's grateful the wind was behind the ball. Tunbridge back in possession with McCarthy on the right hand side, cleverly sneaks it through to guard, he's got Darbray waiting in the middle, he's hit it way too long for Darbray over anybody making a potential run forward, it's going to stay in play for Reigns on the right, right Fox's shield, Button plays it back towards his keeper, which is a little bit risky, he managed to clear it from near the corner of his six yard box, out for another throw, now Fielding does his covering, Hayfield does well to turn into space and Picks up Reigns on the right-hand side. He's got Wilson Cook waiting in the middle. Ball in is towards Cook. He's gone down again. Not much in that for me. Fielding, I thought, just showed good strength. There's no real protestations in the varsity forward either. He's back to his feet. Mead is chopped down from Reigns. He might get caution for that. But the referee basically had his yellow card already in his hand, I think, anticipating it. And uh, Joe Reigns becomes the first varsity player in the book. Second of the game, 39 minutes. Tunbridge have got four players waiting just inside the box. One of them Fielding. It's chipped towards the near post. Free header goal, Sutcliffe. Easily, powerfully headed home from six yards out. The centre back has just his second goal for Tunbridge Angels. It's Bar City one, Tunbridge Angels one in the 40th minute. And I think that's probably no more than deserved on the, the pressure of this half. They've had the better of it since City got that opening goal and uh, the corner, those players just racing onto that ball. Powerful header into the back of the net and you stood really no chance of that whatsoever. In the latter stages of the second half, referee looks at his watch and that's the end of the first period. It's Bar City 1, Tunbridge Angels 1. City taking the lead through Cody Cook's penalty on 10 minutes, cancelled out by Ethan Sutcliffe's header on 40. Into the near post, Fielding tries to help it on. Fielding's onto the loose ball, chips it, straight into the hands of Buse. MacArthur heads it inside to Darbray, 30 yards from goal, it's surrounded, over to the left-hand side now to Shields, Meads offered a run in front of him, Shields wants to go onto his right foot, dancing inside, and he does get onto his right foot, he'll be wishing he hadn't, because he's just placed a shot around 20 yards wide and into that band of Tunbridge supporters. Bates, one of City's recent arrivals, plays about to Dyer, over to the right side, it's a good ball to Hayford, he brings it down, Purposely into the box, but Mead is hanging on by another pitcher and he's grabbed on the shoulder from Hayfield who brings him down and wins a free kick in the box for his team. Thrown in towards Wilson, does well to fend off his man. Wilson somehow gets a shot away, which is a. Uh, Smith can't get it fully away, it's like to guard. Tried to work his way across the penalty area, but ran straight in the bound. Both teams have largely cancelled each other out this afternoon, and now Wilson's got it. He's got Hayfield in room on the right hand side. All this move started from Smith. Still Hayfield coming forward. Tommy got numbers back. Hayfield cuts inside. Hayfield left foot too close to the goalkeeper on his unfavoured left side. Over to the right hand side now with Shields running at Greenside. He's got an overlapping run of Hines. Plays it across. He's just about missed Darbray in the middle. Fortunately for City, he didn't connect and it's helped over from Hayfield. You've got Fowles winks in, just passed out low. Switches it to the left hand side. Sweeps it into the path of Shields, cutting inside near the byline. He's got Darbray in the middle, played it into a great area, and Greensley takes no chances facing his own goal. Trying to peel off into space. Delivery from Hayfield. Dyer's header is to a well taken from just underneath the bar. He's sort of headed back across goal from the centre back who's been in a goal scoring form recently, and uh, Henley does well to clutch. Mead on the left hand side, cuts inside of Yaboa, plays it back to Shields. Trying to get onto that right foot, back heels it back to Mead. Shields again is offering support, and Mead had run it out. He's kept it in. Shields keeps it in play. He's not closed down. Shields has a shot, and it's over the angle of post and crossbar. Yeah, they, they just get charged down so quickly. You think, oh, there's a pass on there, and immediately they're swarmed. As Shields is obstructed by Green State, the referee plays on and, and can't play on because Shields is holding his head. 
So it will go back to a free kick, which I thought it was a foul. Wilson is sort of appealing that Shields made too much of it, but it's not going to help Greenslade's case because he's going to go into the book in the 76th minute. Shields whips it in. Good header away, though, from Cook. Volley from Higgs, ambitious to say the least, but he's on to the follow-up one. Now back to Darbray, left-footed shot, and he sort of digs it out more than anything. It just floats a yard or so over Buses. Bar Green say wins the ball off McCarthy, which willingly hit the referee, he's not interested. Gaboa cuts inside of two men and plays it across to Dyer on halfway. Now Button alongside him. Fans roar, Button chips it, Smith's unmarked, Smithy headed it back inside. It's a chance! Oh, what a block from Fielding on Yeboah! Yeboah's follow up is blocked again, and uh, in fact, I think the referee's pointed to the penalty spot. Handball, presumably, from Fielding, and Henley is absolutely incandescent with rage. He banks the ball on the floor, and it's got to be for Handball. It's a penalty at Bar City, and a chance for the Romans to retake the lead. The Tunbridge bench protesting vigorously down there. It wasn't that easy to see from here exactly whether it was or it wasn't handball. Come over and talking to his assistant now, the referee, waving players away. Yeah, it was fielding through himself in the way. I think the ball has hit his arm, but I think their appeal is, well, how can you get out of the way of it? As Mead goes into the book, Cook looks at the ball. Now he approaches the ball, he shoots, he's put it wide, he strikes it wide of Henley's left post, he's gone not even close to the post really, he's put it wide by one or two yards and the chance for City to retake the lead has gone. Well, easy to see that is probably the decisive moment of this game and as Mark was saying, so rarely does he miss, so studied is he's taking of penalties that it comes as an enormous shock, not just that he missed but he missed by that width from the post. To Hayfield. Sneaks in by two Tunbridge shirts, goes down, referee plays advantage. No, there isn't one. And City have a free kick central. I'm sure he blew his whistle, then waved play on, and then pulled it back, and now has awarded a yellow card. A slightly disjointed looking Tunbridge lineup, but at the moment they're going to hold City to a draw. Hines down the right hand side, he's done well, they might fancy two points more. Hines skipping in field but couldn't get away from the City defence. Only cleared though as far as guard near the corner of the penalty area. He's got time to weigh up his options. Gets in a great ball and Idahan slides in, plays it back towards his keeper. It's not a deliberate back pass so he can take it within his mix, but that was heart and knife moment. Yeah, you feel City just a little bit out of control there at the back. Oh, what's happening here? Abuse has been dispossessed from Meade. He didn't see him come in behind him. It was almost the Gary Crosby effect. And Puse is fortunate that he's put it out of play for a throw. That could have been really embarrassing if City lost the game in that fashion. But now Shields on the attack for Tunbridge, like Monday against Farnborough. They're finishing this game very strongly. He's got two men on him. Mead is onside. Floats a uh, ball in. No, he's not onside. He's offside. Lang went up straight away. And Larby is surrounded by green shirts. Green slate over the top. It's not a bad ball. Cook, is he onside? He is. Oh, he's just put way too much on it, he's half volleyed it, back across goal and out of play for a goal kick. A couple of ricochets against Button, keeps the ball in, there's not enough time for another attack. Bath City are frustratingly held here by Tunbridge Angels, it finishes. Bath City 1, Tunbridge Angels 1, Cody Cook's penalty on 10 minutes, put the Romans ahead, cancelled out by Ethan Sutcliffe's header in the 40th minute. And then the main talking point of the second half, Cody Cook had another penalty to try and win it when Yeboah's shot was charged down by the armour fielding but Cook dragged his penalty a couple of yards wide it would have surely meant all three points for Bath City they're going to have to rely on other teams slipping up alongside them it keeps them very much in the playoff picture they're helped at Hampton have been held by Taunton Town this afternoon too but it makes that game on Tuesday hugely important Andrew 1-1 one, one here well, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you, Mark. My name's Andrew Kerslake from Our City Radio. We wish you a happy weekend. And uh, if you can get to Hampton and Richmond on Tuesday night, as Mark was just saying, critical game for City this afternoon. The scoreline here at Twerton Park is Bar City 1, Tombridge 1. Thank you.